we just finished the example on uh, the camera. So let's go ahead and start example six. And this is talking about the dimensions of an American football field. The length of an American football field is 200 feet more than the width. If the perimeter of the field is 1,040 feet, what are the dimensions? Or what are the dimensions? Let me draw um, a rectangle or a, di or a picture of the football field. It's saying that the length, which is right here, is 200 feet more than the width. So this is the width. We'll call it X. You can call it W. This is going to be X plus 200 because it's 200 more than the width. If the perimeter of the field is 1,040 feet, what are the dimensions? Well, the formula for perimeter rectangle, perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So what that means is you want twice this. So you want 1, 2, the so 2 times the length, and then you add on 2 times the width. Some people will do perimeter equal length plus length plus width plus width. It doesn't matter. We're going to use the first formula. Yeah. So now we have um, the expressions to represent the width and the length. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my formula. I know the perimeter is 1040. So I can go ahead and put that in here. Equals 2 times the length. The length is x plus 200. Plus 2 times the width, 2 times x. So now the equation 1040 equals 2x plus 400. It's a distributive property there plus 2x. On the right hand side I can combine uh, these two like terms. So I have 4x plus 400 and I'm going to subtract 400 from both sides to get x alone on the right hand side. So 1040 minus 400 is 640 that equals 4x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get x alone. So x equals 160. So x equals 160. And so we want to go ahead and find the dimensions of the field. Well, the width is 160 feet because x represents the width of this rectangle, or this um, American, or this football field, and the length is 160, which I put right here, plus 200, which is 360 feet. Okay, so there um, is an example of um, actually using a little bit of geometry there to figure out the dimensions of the rectangle. So again, we use um, this formula here to find perimeter. If you go into your textbook, I know you don't have a physical copy of your textbook, but if you go into your multimedia library and go to section 1.3, um, or you can turn to page 129 in your textbook, they have table 1.1. It goes over um, common formulas for area, perimeter, and volume. And we'll go over those um, as the semester goes um, or the class goes on. But you do want to know the perimeter for a rectangle. Okay. On your own, go ahead and do this next problem. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Please pause the video yourself. And when you replay the video, I'll have the answer on the screen. Okay, so I hope you try this on your own. And um, for the last student stuff, the initial setup of or translating the expression is the hardest part. The length of a rectangular pool is six meters less than twice the width. So again, I draw a little rectangle here, and here's my width. I call it x. Uh, six meters less than twice the width. So here's twice the width. I need six less than that. So I'm going to take away six at the end. Um, it's not six minus two x. That would not be correct. So six less than twice the width. So here's twice the width right here, and six less than that would be minus six. Once you get that, you can go and plug it into the perimeter formula, and we know that perimeter is 126, which I put right there. I solve for x, and I get x to equal 23. The dimensions are 23 meters by 40 meters. I got 40, and I put 23 right into here, 
can figure out what the length might be. Here's one great thing about the problem is you can actually check this. If the dimensions are 23 by 40, that means if I draw my rectangle, this should be 23 and 23, this should be 40 and 40. Add all those up. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull my calculator out. 23 plus 40 plus 23 plus 40, I get a total of 126. And that is the perimeter, the total all the way around. So in example 7, solve the formula for P, uh, uh, solve the formula for P equal 2L plus 2W for L. This is one of the problems where you're solving for a specified variable. And uh, we, we recognize this formula. This is the formula we actually just did a second ago. Two, oh, we just used uh, capital letters. We're trying to get L alone. Okay, that's what the problem is asking me to do. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything around the L. Let me get rid of this 2W by subtracting 2W from both sides. So now I have P minus 2W equals 2L. And I can't combine these because they're not like terms, so I just don't even bother. I want to get L alone, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So L equals P minus 2W over 2. So L equals P minus 2W over 2. And that would be the correct answer. If you want to, you could say L equals P over 2 minus 2W over 2, which would be the same thing as L equals P over 2 minus W. You could reduce. I prefer this answer right here. But you can um, give me that answer. Just be careful that if you... Divide by 2, make sure you divide both the P and the 2W, or the minus 2W by 2, which I did in this next step. Some students will only divide it into here and cross these out. That would be wrong. Okay? And the last example, example 8, we're trying to, um, and we'll actually use this formula later on in the class. We'll get to, I believe, um, the last chapter, uh, chapter 4. We're going to use this formula. It's, um, the formula describes the amount of principal worth, principal of P dollars worth worth after 10 years when invested as simple annual interest rate. Um, solve this formula for P. So we're going to write that formula down. We're trying to solve for P and notice how P is in one and two places. So that's the difference between this problem and example A or example. So um, what we want to do is we want to make this a this formula easier to solve for P. Well, what we can do is we can look at what we did in um, the P chapter, and we can actually factor out that P and pull the P out of both terms. I get 1 plus RT. I pull P out of here, I have 1 left. I pull P out of here, I have RT left. And if you don't believe me, just do the disturbing property. You should get that back. Okay, P times 1 is P. P times RT is PRT. Okay? Now we have P in one spot, and so we're going to get P alone. P is separated from all this by multiplication, which is right there. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1 plus RT. By doing that, these will cross out. So P equals A over 1 plus RT, or P equals A over 1 plus RT, and I have P alone right now. Solving for um, a specified variable, what I did in this example and example 7, you do a lot of that when you get to like a physics class and you have a formula and you want to get one variable by itself and it's just much easier to do these type of problems um, when you start doing um, some examples. So we're just getting used to solving for a variable. And so you have a bunch of those problems in your assignment or homework. Okay, that's the end of this section. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Again, if you have any questions or if you need more examples, please feel free to email me.